A while ago I made a video about an inductive device for powering LEDs wirelessly. Basically speaking out a coil, when you put the LED near it, it lit up. Oh, I'll show you the LED lighting up. There's the LED lit up on that tiny little coil there. This appears to be the original intended application for these. This is just a novel use that they found for it. Let me just put this out of the way and we'll take a look at this. So this little tiny coil down here, I'm going to zoom down a bit because it really is very, very tiny. Uh, but I'll show you a scaled up picture of it in a moment. Uh, it's an energy transfer coil for charging batteries. So as I bring this little circuit board, the matching circuit board up to it, you'll see that the LEDs on this butchered USB stick light as soon as I come within the vicinity of it. And the data with this, the label here, it translates to uh, power supply 5 to 6 volt, output 5 volts. The output is not 5 volts. The output is... 4.2 volts in the button, suggesting this is designed for recharging lithium cells. It also says if it is larger than 2 millimeters, it will be damaged if you use it close up. Does this mean you're not supposed to go close right up hard like this, but you're actually supposed to be at least a fair distance away? I guess that's what it is. But it does, it's not got a huge range. Uh, measuring the output of this, uh, it starts putting output but in, at increasing current as you bring it closer at round about six millimeters that's roughly quarter of an inch before it starts doing it so it is designed for very parallel placement through thin plastic cases since i did know that uh, someone's going to ask will it power the coil it will power my little uh, butchered led that isn't a tuned circuit but will not power any of the other wireless leds because they are a tuned circuit and that's what this relies on so since these are tiny let's cut straight to the chase and to grab the pitch of the circuit board. I shall put this out of the way and turn the power supply off. So I shall shove those over there and I shall bring in exhibit number one. Exhibit number one is almost exactly the same circuit. I'm going to have to zoom out now. It's almost exactly the same circuit as the, uh, the large coil that was designed for exciting the LEDs. But instead of using an external coil, it's got the coil integrated onto the circuit board. And the diameter of these modules is approximately 20 millimeters diameter. That's about three quarters of an inch. So what we have on here, we've got the XKT001, uh, which is basically speaking, it's an oscillator that you program with two resistors and then it drives a MOSFET. In this case, it's a, a matched MOSFET, XKT-R1, and it then drives this coil with a capacitor across it that forms a tuned circuit. So the incoming supply is this decoupling capacitor, these two resistors programming a frequency in that, driving the MOSFET which then, that then pulses the coil at a fixed frequency. The coil, to get the maximum number of turns, it starts off down here, spirals outwards to the edge, goes through the plated hole, spirals backwards to the middle in the same direction, and then ducks back through onto the other side of that uh, capacitor. Exhibit number two, the receiver, and this, uh, I did not find a data sheet. I have had to kind of reverse engineer it based on what uh, it is as such. But we have the tuned coil again. Again, it's the coil winding its way out to the outside, ducking through here and winding its way back to the inside, coming back through here. Goes to the tuned, the capacitor across it to create a tuned circuit. There is a short key diode that then leads to another capacitor, which provides a sort of unregulated supply. Uh, that's then used via this resistor to provide a power supply to this chip, but it also provides the solid supply to the chip. The chip... I'm guessing it's a linear regulator, then regulates it down based on these resistors here, which form a sort of divider that's used for sensing. And the output then has a 3K resistor in series with an LED just to show it's working, and then out through a shock key diode to whatever you're charging. That is it. It's a very straightforward looking circuit. All the magic is done in these chips. Let me bring in the schematic for your delight. So I'll zoom down on this. Here is the transmitter. The 5 volts comes in, they say 5 to 6 volts, has a decoupling capacitor to provide a local reservoir for stability of the circuit. Here is the XKT001 oscillator chip, or clock generating chip, and it has a 200k resistor and a 10k resistor. Uh, the choice of resistor sets the frequency output to this MOSFET, and I'm pretty sure it's a 50-50 square wave. 
This MOSFET is dedicated to the Task XKTR1. I don't know if that's just it's optimized for fast switching or designed to be comfortable with being in series with coils, but the coil uh, has a capacitor across it, and this is the transmitter coil that's spiraled around the outside of that circuit board. And in its passive state, this circuit draws 24 milliamps, um, which equates to about just over a tenth of a watt, so it's not that bad. When I had the circuit right up close to it, it went up to about 100 milliamps, but that may have been affected by the, the resistor in series of these LEDs, or it might just have been its maximum of its ability of energy to couple. The receiver is a bit more complicated. This is what I think it does because I've deduced it based on the components connected to the pins and what I believe their function is. Here is the receiver coil with its tuning capacitor across it forming the resonant tuned circuit, the LC network. It goes through the Schottky diode and it charges up this capacitor and uh, offload that charged up to about 9 volts. When I had this across it, it went down to about 6.3 volt, 3.5 volts. It goes through this device and the chip, I should have actually written what that is. What is that? Hold on, where is it? I've just dropped it, haven't I? No, I've not. Let's write it now. X, K, T, dash, R, 2. Very cryptic. So it goes through the XKT R2 chip, and I reckon this is a linear current regulated output. I don't think there's any fancy switching going on. And the output then goes via this Schottky diode to the batteries or whatever you're low, uh, powering with this. There is the LED from the, that side with the 3K resistor. I'm guessing the diode is there purely to stop it. The battery sort of back discharge into this, lighting that LED, powering these, this little resistive divider, which is very high value and possibly losses in the chip itself. But, um, so that means the voltage here will have to be just about 0.2 volts higher than this, uh, than the desired voltage to allow for the drop across the Schottky diode. On the output, there's always this, also this resistive divider, 680K and a 1 mega ohm resistor, which is quite high. Uh, and that goes to the sense input. And I'm guessing that by varying the value of these resistors, you can then set the output voltage from that. If it is a linear regulator, I guess maybe it's got internal thermal protection if it was ever to get that much of, you know, if you were to short circuit the output or something like that. Assuming it can transfer that much energy across. At 5 volts... And 100 milliamps, that's literally, I mean, that's tiny. Um, that's a minute amount of power. So it's not really going to be dramatic. 500 milliwatts, half a watt. Although that could be quite hot for that chip. But this is just speculation. Again, if I ever find the data sheet, I'm pretty expect, much expected to be this. So sense coil, rectifier, capacitor, voltage regulator with feedback resistors and an LED and then the output, that is it. So it's quite an interesting set of little circuit boards. I got them from AliExpress. Um, I can't really immediately think of many applications. Uh, well, recharging of batteries. Uh, note that the wires that they come with, uh, the transmitter comes with fairly thick wires because it's drawing quite high current pulses. The receiver comes with very, very thin wires but then they're not really, it's not dealing with a lot of current, it's just designed to build into your own device. But this could be useful. It could be useful for um, just wireless charging where you want something to be kept waterproof, where you just want to be able to put it down and have it charge, or maybe just an ornament that you just want to be able to place the ornament on the table and it sort of powers the ornament, but it does have to be in intimate contact. So quite interesting little circuit boards.